Hi there, it's Tim from Auto Van Cam. Welcome to the channel. This is our docu series for our new family vehicle. If you haven't already seen the first video, I suggest you check that out. You get to see the van, you get to see me do the spark plugs. And now we're going to be continuing on by changing the oil cooler. I've got a nice little upgrade. I've got an aluminium housing. If you saw, it's in the last video. It's nice and shiny and metal. So we're going to remove this lower intake manifold and we're going to get that all changed. Now this isn't a how-to video, this is just a docu-series of what I'm doing here. I'm getting the vehicle prepped for safety and making sure it's a nice reliable vehicle. I just replaced the spark plugs. So I already had the upper intake manifold removed. I changed the spark plugs, I put the coils back in. I also checked out the service history as well. Uh, what else is left? We've got a big list. We've got to, I've got to try and get as much of it accomplished today. If not, I can do some tomorrow. Because I do have a trip to run to the uh, junkyard to see if I can find some stow and go seats and a headrest. So, shall we crack on? I'll give you another look at the oil cooler as well. So, if you didn't already see the first video, I know I tend to ramble, my videos can be kind of long. This is the oil cooler. I will be replacing. It's metal instead of plastic. This is an upgrade. It doesn't, however, come with new sensors, but I'm sure I can get the old sensors to work if they don't break. Otherwise, then the vehicle's dead in the water until tomorrow, and I have to start doing the struts. So I've done the spark plugs. What's left is the oil cooler. I'll replace the coolant while I'm at it because old coolant can become conductive and it is one of the causes of coolant leaks that anything over 0 0.03 of a volt is actually coolant conducting and it will travel through components and cause coolant leaks. So that is on the agenda. I'll drain and fill as much coolant as I can. I'll do the oil cooler. Along with that, once I've done that, I'll change the oil and put one of my Wix oil filters in instead of the Dorman oil filter that comes with this kit. I also got the transmission oil filter and top up. So the transmission holds around 8 litres and I'll probably be changing between 4 and 5 litres. And the filter, so you've got to remove the pan for that. I got two quick struts for the front, which I'm going to have to remove by the looks of it, the wiper blades. I have to remove the wiper blades, I mean they've just been off anyways, I just had the windshield changed because it had a crack in it and that won't pass vehicle safety. So I've got two quick struts for the front, so that will be a nice easy job. And then I've got two struts for the rear and the vehicle and a tail light and a headrest and that's, that will be all that's needed for safety. Hopefully this vehicle turns out to be nice and reliable. I mean it has already had one cylinder head replaced. That's not a bad thing. Probably for a bad lifter, because it had a cylinder for you know, 45% leak, failed the leak down test, it was 45% leaking. So, it was probably a bad lifter, pit of bowel, something like that. So I'm just getting off all the little tabs now. With a nice little trim tool, snap on. So that's all out of the way, I just got to unplug the injectors. What I like about this pick, it's like a shepherd's crook. And what I do, instead of pinching the connectors and straining your fingers and trying to yank and pull, I'll pull up the security locking tab and then I'll slide this pick underneath the lock tab and then just gently pull the connector off. If you're a mechanic, you know what I mean. If you're not a mechanic, you, won't, <laughs> you might not necessarily know what I mean. Okay, that's the fuel line off. Now I can take off the lower intake.
chassis this boat. I was worried about that one. The last thing I want is one of these to snap. There we go. There's the lower intake off. The seals are still kind of supple. That seal has been rolled over a little bit. And a couple of other ones. So I wonder if that will explain my misfire. Oh yeah. There's the oil cooler bunch of shit all the way around too. All right, let's see if I can get this lower rad hose. Sneak in here. Okay, so now I've got the coolant out the top of the engine. I'm gonna pull the uh, oil cooler out. All right, let's get the oil filter out. I'll just grab a bin. Yeah. Now I've got to get rid of all the mess in the engine belly. Okay, I got my sucker. That'll speed things up a bit. Okay. So now I'm going to do some cleaning, get some uh, air plugs in, let's clean this, uh, all these ports up. I've got to prep the uh, new oil cooler now for installation. I'll get everything transferred over and we'll install it. Happy days. All right, so now we've got the new oil cooler assembly. All filter housing and cooler assembly all together. Got the old sensors in. I used some PTFE tape on the old sensors. And this was all in separate parts. So now I've lubed up the O-ring there and now it's too, time to install it back into the engine. That went in rather easy. So this kit also comes with new bolts.
Right, now that the oil cooler is all torqued up, I'm going to stick this hose back on. Let's get my arm back down there. Okay, time for the Wix oil filter to go in. Nice orange cover. There we go. There's the oil, the oil filter housing in. And then we just got to reinstall the manifolds, put corn in and then oil. Right, let's clean the mating surfaces for the Lower intake manifold. Found a random nut just lying in the engine bay. It's not one that I removed. It's been there for a while, I think. Just sitting on the engine now. All my gaskets are still there. I'm clean. No debris on them. All the fasteners are uh, 12 Newton meters. I still have it written down in my notebook from last time I did one of these. Perfect. Now it's time for the upper intake. Put that back in there. The upper nut bolts for the manifold, be very careful not to overdo them. They are 10 newton meters, so if you overdo them, they split the manifold. Seven, okay. I just got the auxiliary to do up for the manifold. And we'll be tickety boo.
There we go, and there we have it. One oil cooler. I'm going to put some oil in this. I drain the oil out, replace the drain plug sealing ring. And now it's time to get some fresh oil in this thing. So the manufacturer says approximately 5.7 litres. Now, because we're on the angle, on ramps we'll probably end up putting around 6.2 litres of oil in it. This vehicle takes 520. Don't forget this oil in. Fill it up with coolant. I'm using one of these spill-free funnels. All right, so I'm going to use some Celsius pre-mixed extended life. See how much of this vehicle, see how much coolant this vehicle drinks, eh? Now there is a bleeder screw down here. Try and get as much coolant in it as possible. Or a starter up. I also need to I notice the battery strap is loose. Okay, well that bolt is dickered. Need to find a way of putting that battery strap back on. So I can start the vehicle. I have an old clamp left over from a side mount battery. I've installed some ridiculous thing. How many washers do I need to add? I'll be okay. There we go. Doesn't appear to be going anywhere now. So that's the battery taken care of. I believe we're all ready to start the vehicle. There's oil in it. The new coolers in there. There's coolant in it, ready to be bled. I fixed the uh, battery post because that was loose. And that would have left me stranded somewhere. So. Going around, make sure everything's hunky dory. Let's fire her up. Let's check the oil level on this bad boy. And I think after I've done this, I think I'll wrap it up for the day. So we're going to get some dog food and then uh, I've got to pick away at the rest, I suppose, tomorrow. See how much I get done tomorrow. I need to order a special tool for the transmission oil change. 
to check the uh, fluid level. And then, uh, yeah, I've got all the other bits to accomplish too. I'll just grab some oil. All right, let's take another half liter in and see where we're at. Okay, so we're halfway up the safe zone. So in total, in this all caller job, it's taken 7.3 liters of oil. I'm halfway in the safe zone, so once I'm the flat level on the ground, that will say we'll be at the top of the safe zone. Now I'm just going to bleed the coolant. I think I'll call it a day, I think. I know there's a time pressure. I will need to get this vehicle safety by Thursday. So I might have to take some days off work. I only got work booked so far for Tuesday and Friday and Saturday. But I am really looking forward to getting this vehicle done. One less thing I've got to worry about. By the looks of it, I'll have to change the white pipe as well at some point. So that'll be fun. Uh, the bolts for the rear, the rear cap, are a bit shirty. There's not much left of them. Nothing left of them, to be honest. There we go. It's starting to bubble. I've got the heating on full mat. I haven't got the fan on full, but I've got the heating on full, so I can tell when the, the heat core has got no air in it. Here, a fan belt squeaked. That's okay, I just got some coolant on it. It'll take a little while for it to burn off the belt. Nothing to worry about. The heating's nice and hot on the inside of the vehicle. Concludes, concludes this Sunday's video. Getting the family van ready. So I'm glad I don't have to deal with the white pipe just yet. So enjoyed this video of me just randomly talking, showing you what we're doing to get ready for safety. Then you know I'd really appreciate it if you like. Hit that like button, we comment and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video where I'll be uh, tackling some more objects for safety. Alright, have a good one guys. Bye bye.